Hello, my name is Randy Olson and I'm the VP of Global Business Development for the ProFM Credential Program. And I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome, welcome you to our webinar today, Your Role in Defending Facility Systems from Cyber Attacks. This session is sponsored by the ProFM Credential Program and by Facilities Engineering Associates. We're gonna begin shortly, but before we do, I'd like to go over a few technical notes. Uh, first, this session will be recorded. Everyone who registered will receive an email within five days with the link to the recorded session. Second, we'll save some time at the end of the session for uh, questions. So please submit those questions throughout the session and throughout the content today. Um, you'll need to get uh, the Q&A panel by hovering at the bottom of the screen um, where you'll be able to then submit questions to us and we'll take it as many as time allows. So with that, I'd like to uh, kind of walk through the direction that we're going to go today. So I'll, I'll introduce our uh, speaker here in a minute. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the facility's role in cybersecurity. What do I need to know about cybersecurity? Cybersecurity Federal Building Personnel Training Act competencies, training resources available, and then again, we'll do a question and answer at the beginning, at the end of the session. So with that, um, I'd like to uh, welcome Maureen Roskoski to our session today. We're, com we're very fortunate to have Maureen join us. Uh, Maureen is the Corporate Sustainability Officer and a Senior Professional at FEA, Facility Engineering Associates. She's worked with existing facilities on building certification, energy management, and sustainable facility management during her 20 years of practice. We're thrilled to have Maureen as a ProFM credential instructor. Uh, she also teaches BOC and SFP. Maureen leads FEA's contract with the GSA for support of the U.S. Federal Building Personnel Training Act, or FBPTA, as we'll, we'll likely refer to it throughout this session. She developed the competency model and career for facilities and energy workforce, and she managed the overall effort for FEA's ISO 22301 certification in business continuity management systems. So welcome, Maureen, to our session today. Uh, honored and uh, blessed to have you with us. And uh, with that, I'd like to take this opportunity to um, honor and recognize all the FMs out there as it is World FM Day today. Um, you know, this year is a little bit different than most, uh, but more than ever, U.S. facility facility professionals, you know, really have shown that you're indispensable. Uh, we're grateful for the tireless work and dedication you take on each day to keep keep your buildings, keep our buildings and our community safe, efficient, and operational. Your organizations and uh, the world really could not function without you. Uh, Pro FM and our partners are dedicated to supporting and elevating careers of facility managers like you around the world every day and wanted to take an extra time to say thank you to FMs for all you do. Uh, um, on our website at profmi.org, there's a, there's a page dedicated to, uh, to recognizing you folks. So again, thank you so much and I hope you enjoy your World FM Day. Um, in 2017, in uh, mid-2017, uh, ProFM, um, conducted an extensive market survey of tens of thousands of facility management professionals. And the result of that survey is the ProFM body of knowledge, um, which is represented to you on the screen um, now, I believe. So this uh, body of knowledge represents a roadmap into where the facility management career is going at the time and where, where it's going in the future. Um, but on the right-hand side of the screen, you see a number of, of technical items that are associated with this survey and this body of knowledge. Um, and those, those technical details and those technical competencies fit into four functional areas of operations and maintenance, asset management, business management and risk management. The content of the topic today, uh, cybersecurity fits within that risk management module within the ProFM body of knowledge. So those are really the technical skills 
needed for facility managers today and into the future. And again, based on that uh, survey that we conducted across thousands of uh, facility management professionals. Then in addition to that, there's five cross-functional competencies, really soft skills, if you will, that thread across all those technical, technical skills. Um, those are communication, sustainability, quality, innovation, and collaboration. So on top of this model, on top of this roadmap, the Pro-FM credential program was built. So there's education and, and training um, and, and um, associated um, assessments around each one of these really 24 things that every facility manager should know. And again, our topic today uh, fits within this risk management module. So there's uh, content and training around cybersecurity and then uh, assessment questions around cybersecurity within that module of the ProFM. As we built this model, um, key inputs into this model were the US Federal Building Personnel Training Act, the FPPTA that Maureen will talk more about today, and then the ISO 41000 standards for facility management. So with that, I am going to uh, turn this over to Maureen. So I'm gonna advance this one for you, Maureen, and then the, uh, the floor is yours. Great, thank you, Randy. And thanks everyone for joining us today. We wanted to talk about uh, cybersecurity today. And as we're going through this pandemic, um, cybersecurity has become an issue with um, people working in different locations, people working remotely, a lot of different, um, uh, you know, information that we have to understand, a lot of different attacks that are out there. And we'll have to think of that also as we get back into our buildings and we're bringing devices back into networks and things like that. But I wanted to explain my role a little bit here. Um, as Randy mentioned, my company, Facility Engineering Associates, leads a contract with the General Services Administration's Office of Federal High Performance Buildings. They are the office that oversees the Federal Buildings Personnel Training Act, FBPTA for short. And so today what I want to talk about is, is to try to understand and give you some resources of where you can find the competencies that those of us working in facilities need to have. So that's really the kind of the key discussion today is what is the facility's role in cybersecurity? And I've got some resources for you and some history to, to talk to you about. I'm not an expert in cybersecurity, um, but I have worked with uh, some folks and putting all this together so I can point you to different places. But I'm much like you, where of more of a facility management role and expertise. And when you think about cybersecurity, we tend to lump them into a couple of buckets between IT, information technology, and OT, operational technology, uh, which includes controls systems. And there's a big difference between the role of IT and OT in cybersecurity, both in the way the systems are designed and operated, but also in the knowledge, skills, and abilities of the personnel, right? It's a big difference for someone who specializes in IT versus someone who specializes in building maintenance or facility management. And sometimes, well, often these are in very different distinct groups within the organization. And they don't always play nice with each other. If you think about IT systems and the way that they're designed and operated, they emphasize confidentiality, right? And they're looking for to be as secure as they can be and still helping the organization meet its mission. On the OT side, in the operational tech technology, those systems emphasize availability. And this can be our building automation systems, any energy control systems, lighting systems, all your security systems, even our CMMS, our work order systems, right? Those are all things we want to be able to access those remotely often. We may need contractors to have access. We may need lots of people to have access. So these are emphasizing availability in, in, a, in a different way. And so if you think about our smart buildings, all the technology, 
um, that we utilize in facility management to manage our buildings, we really do play a role in cybersecurity, right? So we have to have some acknowledgement of that role, but we wanna think through what are the actual things that we need to know and understand. Right. I'm not seeing the little arrows to move forward. If you want to move forward to the next slide. Oh, there it is. So the other thing to think about this as we think about these different roles is how much this is on the rise. Right. We're, we certainly hear about cybersecurity issues a lot more now. But if you look at this, I mean, this is a gigantic increase. This is looking at the number of records lost. So this is data lost. And if you recognize some of these names here, you'll recognize some of these breaches that occurred. And we had instances with different retailers and things like that where the breaches occurred by going through uh, a building automation system, through HVAC technology, those energy control systems. Um, that are not often as secure. Sometimes IT doesn't even know about those systems and we haven't really linked together. So as we think through this and think about our roles, what do we really need to know and understand in facilities about cybersecurity? As we think about IT, And the, the knowledge, skills, and abilities that IT needs to have. And we think about on the operational technology, what we need to, to have to be able to run our control systems, look at our energy, manage our buildings. There's a big difference, right? You can see on the left here, facility engineering KSAs, knowledge, skills, and abilities. And then over on the right, you see the IT professionals and their knowledge, skills, and abilities. And the, the facilities world where we fit in is somewhere in the middle there, right? We can't be IT professionals, but we need to at least have that basic understanding and awareness so we're not putting our company and our organization in jeopardy and that we're able to recognize threats as they come in and recognize supply chain and contracting issues that may occur. And so this has been recognized at the federal government there have been some efforts underway to look at cybersecurity competencies. There was a recent executive order, and there were several other initiatives that took place where they were looking at from a federal workforce, where are our skills gaps in cybersecurity? So if you can imagine the first round went through IT, and they looked at IT across all the agencies, they came up with competencies, training, all kinds of things. And then they took a second look and said, okay, let's take a look and see if we're missing anyone. And they were missing the OT control system side. They were missing the facility side, which not just facility systems, but if you think about other um, non-IT types of systems. So think government-wide in the DOD, there's you know missile control systems and all kinds of things that fit into this category that are beyond the realm of the IT role. So there's a di direct emphasis here on, in the federal workforce and thinking through cybersecurity. And there's another resource, the Federal Buildings Personnel Training Act that can provide you the detail you need to figure out what are the competencies either I or my team needs to have. And I'll explain what that is in a second. The, we recently, in the past two years, put together a working group of different agencies, industry providers, where we looked at developing the competencies, identifying the competencies that those in facilities need to know. So this was a consolidated effort from a group of experts, and we built that into our existing competency model. So let's talk a little bit about what the FBPTA is. It is an act, it's about 10 years old, that required GSA to determine what are the core competencies for federal buildings personnel. 
And what is the recommended curriculum and continuing education that will help fill those competencies? It requires, the act requires that GSA annually update the competencies in the curriculum so that we are doing things like adding in cybersecurity that maybe 10 years ago, this wasn't something thought of as required for facilities personnel. It does require compliance by all federal buildings personnel and contractors. But who does that really apply to? If you think about the life cycle of a facility, this competency model in this act really applies to those that run and manage buildings. So it really fits squarely in that operations and maintenance portion of the facility life cycle. So you can think of that as facility management roles, energy management roles, and building operation roles. So the model itself is going to focus in on those things and take that into account. So the model has 12 competency areas you can see across the top here ranging from management of operations and maintenance to performance of operations and maintenance which really gets into the hands-on wrench turning physically maintaining and repairing systems technology the use of building automation systems cmms energy management sustainability water efficiency and you can see how this fits in with the different roles and this model is set up such that no one person should have all of these competencies. We have over 200, but as an agency, you should be able to show that you have all of these 200 competencies covered across your personnel. Some, your energy manager is gonna to need to have a higher proficiency level in, some your building operator will have a higher proficiency level in. And there were 77 of these that were designated high priority, which are ones that, um, really everyone should know and are pretty core to enhancing building operations. So let me show you the cybersecurity competencies that we developed. And again, this was done through a working group looking at it. We added them to the technology competency area. So the first core competency is cybersecurity and facility management and building O&M. And I don't expect you to read these. I'm going to pop up one of them in a minute for you to see, but there's 11 performances or competencies listed here. And then there's also cybersecurity and design and acquisition. So if we pull this out and take a look at one of these is demonstrate knowledge of how to conduct cybersecurity and risk assessments for building systems. Right, so that's something that in facilities, as a facility manager, we should at least be able to be able to evaluate the risk of our systems, the systems that are under our control. We should also be able to inventory critical assets that if there is some security issue, something happens from a facility's perspective, this is considered a critical asset. And to be able to identify vulnerable systems, systems that may be vulnerable to attacks. And then we also need to understand that role when we think about contracts and design and acquisition. See if my animation works through here. And right. Marie, while you're waiting for that, just a reminder that uh, please um, reach out to us with questions. So we're getting some good questions. You have those, type those in. Thank you. Okay, great. We may have contractors, right? A lot of the control systems are run by contractors. Maybe they're coming into your building often. So we need to understand within facilities, working with our procurement, to be able to incorporate cybersecurity requirements into those contracting requirements. We may also, depending upon if we um, lease buildings, be able to um, incorporate that into lease language, occupancy agreements, and focusing in on the systems, subsystems that are part of our control. So we've looked at this in terms of focusing in on what the different roles will need to know, right? Because again, we, we're not IT professionals. We're not going to be um, advanced proficiency in, in these areas, but there are ones that we should really have a good understanding of. So this 
three, three circles here are meant to show the differences in proficiency levels. If we think about those competencies that I showed in the model, if we applied those across, we look at the energy manager. Let's say the energy manager needs to have all 19 of these competencies because they're in this organization, they're the ones really responsible for the control systems. And so they're gonna need this probably at an intermediate level. Um, then when we go to the facility manager, we're touching the systems, but we're not in the control system on a day-to-day -day basis usually. So let's make our proficiency more at the basic understanding for most of these. Maybe there's some that we need to have an intermediate, intermediate level proficiency that are more specific to our job. And maybe there's some that we need to just have an awareness of. And then when you get down to the building operator, if they're not in the control systems, then maybe they just really need to have an awareness that they need to understand what cybersecurity is, understand the vulnerabilities in the systems and be able to um, highlight or announce or identify if there's a specific vulnerability, if there's a specific attack, if there's any odd things going on. So there's flexibility in the FVPTA model for agencies, um, even those with outside the federal government to use that model and apply the competencies as it best fits in each of your different roles. That's one of the, the beauty of this uh, model is that it's flexible. The PROFM credential also has cybersecurity in that risk management section. And again, focuses in on from a facilities perspective, what do we really need to know? And focusing from the risk management side, just like the FBPTA competencies, thinking about the risk. What are the sources of risk? Again, within my realm, within my control, the systems that I utilize, what I'm bringing in, what people I'm bringing in, how do I have contractor access, things like that. And being able to manage those cybersecurity risks is very important. So right now, there's not a lot of facility focused cybersecurity training. We're hoping as we add this into the model that there will be some additional training. In the past, people have been sort of wary of going into control systems in detail because there's a lot of vendor specificity and things like that. But there are some, particularly in the federal government, some resources. So I put some links here that um, are available through the whole building design guide, that are available through um, Homeland Security and different areas that you can get some good detailed information on. And I wanted to round it out with just a few key things. Again, that you know, some of the presentations I've given on this with some of the cybersecurity experts, this is what they, that they say. It's really this risk management, trying to understand the vulnerabilities and watch for attacks and adversaries knowing our vendors, being connected, understanding how they're getting into the systems and having some security there, implementing hygiene and understanding those risks, do some training, make sure you have the knowledge and be able to bring that up to IT or to other levels. We had, uh, when I did this presentation at the Energy Exchange, there was the GSA um, person, IT chief information officer who presented and he actually showed video of a cyber attack and how the, the hackers were trying to get into the system and they came in through the building automation system and it was where a, a contractor was entering into the system and the password was 0000, right? The standard password, nobody had ever changed it. They got lucky because this system was never connected to anything beyond their building. So the hackers weren't able to get into the data that they were actually looking for. Lastly, here I wanted to show you just some of the resources and tools. If you want to learn more about the FBPTA, these are the tools that will help you. And um, other areas, a couple of other um, good resources that I think are good for you. So with that, uh, Randy, we'll be able to take some questions. 
Yeah, thanks, Maureen. We've got a number of good questions here. And again, as we're, as we're going through these, if you have additional things you'd like to ask, uh, please reach out to us via the Q&A panel, the, the kind of in the center of your screen. Uh, first question is, are the FBPTA tools available to people outside the federal government? Yes. So the FBPTA competency model and then the tools that uh, you see on the slide here, the Accelerate FM tool and the FedSat tool are all free online resources available to, to anyone. And so I would recommend um, from a cybersecurity perspective, if you're trying to get a handle on the competencies, it's a great resource. And also from a general workforce development planning, if you're, if you're interested in, in, the, in that side, they're great resources as well. Great. Um, and I'll let you uh, take this one as well, Maureen. I uh, do not work for a government agency slash entity, but think there might be a big benefit for me to fill knowledge gap for my role as FM for my company in this cybersecurity area. Is there an educational platform slash program that will help guide me in filling this gap? Yeah, so that's a great question. Some of the resources that I put up um, in, a, in the earlier slide will be uh, documents and things that you can read to get better knowledge. Um, the Pro FM credential has that cybersecurity component. Um, but outside of that, for facilities specific, there, there isn't a lot in the industry yet. And like I say, that's, we're hoping that that's something that will, will build as this need grows and this recognition grows. When we went through the, with the working group to develop the competencies, we came up with uh, resources associated with those competencies and that's available in the model, but they are very, very IT focused. So most facilities people, it's not the kind of certifications or training that they would take. So it's kind of an emerging need right now. Great, uh, another great question. Um, what is a CMMS provider's role in cybersecurity? Oh, that's a good what one. can FMs ask their CMS, CMMS provider? That's a, that's a good one. Um, I think diving into them with what their security is and how, how they've thought through it um, would be a good, a good question to ask. I think it, it sits more so on the, the, the side of the facility manager or those using the system as to how you implement the access. Um, it seems like access is one of the bigger um, vulnerabilities. And there's, there's sort of simple things we can do there um, to prevent that. But I think for a long time, we haven't thought about control systems the same way we think about our computers and, and the cyber vulnerabilities. Okay, great. Um, and you somewhat addressed this. I'll, I'll take part of this and I'll let you take part of it, Maureen. So, um, how can I make a value argument to my organization for investing in ProFM? And is cybersecurity included in the current program for ProFM? So the first part of that I'll take, uh, there, is a, there are tools available on ProFMI.org that help you uh, uh, justify the value in ProFM to your organization. So uh, a wealth of information out there to, to help you with that and also um, help you kind of fill in uh, what gaps you might have as it relates to the ProFM body of knowledge that I shared at the beginning of the presentation. And then, Maureen, you touched on this, but you might want to reiterate, is cybersecurity included in the current program for ProFM? Right. <clears throat> and so cybersecurity is included in that risk management module. And I went through the ProFM program last year and was very glad to see that in there. As I mentioned, a lot of the other facility management education that we're used to, it hasn't um, evolved to include that yet. And so it's, again, tailored to this level, right? Because there's a ton of cybersecurity education you can take out there, but it's much more focused at the IT level and gets into a level of detail that we don't need in this role that we play and that we may not ever want to know. I learned more acronyms in listening to that working group than I ever had, right? There's a whole nother world of certification and licenses and all kinds of things 
So we need to be able to take it down to what what does a facilities person uh, need to know? And I think the, the ProFM does a good job of incorporating that into the risk management section. And Marina, I think we'll, we have time for one more. So I will um, give you one more. Do you have any tips for auditing our existing cybersecurity systems to find potential areas of risk? So myself, I don't. Uh, like I said, I'm not the cybersecurity expert, but um, when you get these slides, the, the slide that has other training resources that has the three squares has some specific links to, um, yeah, if you go up to it, particularly the one in the middle, um, which is the CISA site, that has a lot of really good detailed information about cybersecurity. And if you get down into the operational technology or control systems, um, there's some detailed information for you in there. Great, well, we uh, apologize. We've not gotten all the questions, but we certainly wanna be sensitive to your time. Uh, to wrap up, we wanna thank you for joining us today. Maureen, thank you for the great presentation um, on, a, on, a, on a great topic. Um, just want to make you aware of a program we've got at ProFM uh, to really support our objective of giving back to the industry. And there's uh, three ProFM scholarships available uh, that you'll need to apply for this month, but it's for uh, working professionals, uh, for students, and then for, for military veterans. So um, if you uh, fall into those three categories, one of those three categories, which you probably do, you know, please reach out at the website um, at the bottom of the screen there and apply for those scholarships. We will announce that here sometime in June. And with that, we are uh, just a little bit over time. So we thank you again for joining our uh, webinar today. If you have additional questions, profmi.org is a great resource for that. We'll be following up with a link to the recording and we'll try to uh, address any questions we didn't get to in the presentation today. Uh, with that, I wish you, uh, uh, again, a very happy World FM Day. Enjoy your Wednesday, and we'll look forward to hearing from you down the road. Thanks, Randy. Thank you.